This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. It's one o'clock on a Monday afternoon, so you must be watching Think Tech Hawaii, Research in Manoa. I'm your host, Pete McGuinness-Mark, and today our guest is Norbert Schorgoffer, who works for the Planetary Science Institute here in Hawaii. And Norbert's part of the Dawn spacecraft science team, and Dawn is a spacecraft which has been traveling to the middle part of the solar system, beyond the orbit of Mars, and so today we're going to be discussing the Dwarf Planet series. So Norbert, welcome to the show. Really excited to hear what you've got to say. Thank you for having me. You're more than welcome. And we're going to be visiting a dwarf planet, so can you just yes. tell the viewers what is a dwarf planet? We, we've had people talking about the moon or icy moons of Jupiter, yeah. what sort well, of scale are we talking about? I, I brought a dwarf planet, so this yeah, is, you've this brought is a dwarf a, planet. This is a dwarf planet here on a, on, a, on a table or a small model of a dwarf planet. The real one is about 940 kilometers in diameter, it's about 600 miles or so. Uh, all right, and we're looking at something, um, it's colored. Right, so yes. what do the colors imply? So, so the colors elevation, red high, uh, blue low. Okay. Um, and and uh, the, the important, or what makes it a dwarf planet, is that it's very round. I see. So it, it doesn't have any giant mountains or volcanoes. And um, and so what, what it implies is that at some stage in Sirius's history, you know, it was soft inside. And, and the, the, the big mountains all sank in and, and made this object oh, more round. So it's nearly spherical. Yes. All right. Do we have many dwarf planets in the solar system? Well, on, well, um, any asteroid belt, which is you know between Mars and Jupiter, of course, uh, it's the only one. Now there are more outside the orbit of Neptune, and um, there is a you know small number of recognized one. There might be more. We haven't recognized this dwarf planet because it's difficult to determine the shape. So, so, so an asteroid wouldn't be that round. This right. is, it's round like a planet. Sirius is round, a dwarf planet is round like a planet. And I would guess that the viewers probably are most familiar with Pluto, which yes. is now classified as a dwarf yeah. planet. It has the same characteristics, yes. albeit different size, yes. as Sirius, correct? Yeah, yeah. so in, in some ways the dwarf planet category was introduced because of Pluto. But anyway, when it was taking off the planet list, <laughs> they, you know, invented the, the or made the dwarf planet. Causing category. no end of confusion to all high school students who now have to remember eight planet names instead. Uh, yeah, and, um, and so the dwarf planet hasn't cleared its orbit because there's many other objects in the asteroid belt. So it's not a planet, um, but it's also an asteroid because it's 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 so round and a roundness indicates you know the, the, the ins it got hot in the inside uh, at some point, unlike an asteroid and and. And to be, you know, you only, so, so Ceres also has a lot of ice. And so you don't need to melt rock to make it soft inside. You can just melt the ice. Right. As soon as you melt the, the ice, the, it turns the, soft. The, the yeah. model you've bought this, uh, this afternoon, it has different colors. So there must be some topographic relief there, right? Oh, there, there's some. Uh, and, and so are we thinking about, say, uh, a kilometer or 10 kilometers height variations across the world? Well, I, I, I'm maybe around eight, eight, eight kilometers or eight so. Eight kilometers, uh, okay. Yeah, All right, now you're a, a science team member on the Dawn spacecraft. So tell me a little bit about what the Dawn mission was trying to accomplish. When, when did it fly? It's is it still operational? Give me some details. Yeah, so it's a remarkable spacecraft. It is ion propulsion, and, and that allowed it to orbit two different objects. So ion propulsion, you um, you get a um, um, you know it, it's it's sort of weak, but it's it's continuing, and so you you can go you can reach objects and then leave an object you you couldn't do with with regular propulsion. So it, it was at Vesta originally. Um, and Vesta is another asteroid, or an a, asteroid? A, a large asteroid, a um, mm -hmm. very interesting large asteroid, but it doesn't have eyes, and it's also not classified as a dwarf planet. And, and Sirius, which was always the main target of the mission, was uh, orbited second, and it's, it's the only mission which ever orbited a dwarf planet. And so we can study its geophysics and... Fine. And, and when, when did the spacecraft launch, or when did it arrive at well, its it, target? It, it, it arrived at Sirius in March 2015. 
and it is it's still there, but no longer at the closest. So it orbited about, um, yeah, I can see that, but at, at its lowest, at its closest orbited about at this, at this height, we call it there. Uh, Lamo orbit, and, and now it's it's uh, further away, and we'll go in a um, we go in a very elliptical orbit soon to to get even closer to. Well, well, to help the viewers, let's go to the first slide, which I think will just basically summarize. That the, the first slide should be uh, number one. There we go. Um, and what we're seeing here, looking down uh, from uh, north of the sun in the middle, and the arrows point to the orbits of Earth. Mars, Festival, and Ceres. So your mission, I say your mission because you're part of the science team, was to go to both Festa and Ceres. Yes, and it did. And you've been part of the science team ever since the spacecraft arrived at Ceres? Is yes. that the sort yes. of thing? And, and your specialization is in studying what? Ice. I study ice in Ceres, which actually has an interesting uh, route in Hawaii, an interesting history in Hawaii. Um, because there was scientists in Hawaii who predicted it has ice very close to the surface. So, so, so on, the, on the surface, you almost see no ice. Um, there are these bright spots, but mostly not ice. Um, uh, but there is lots of ice in the interior. All right, let's take a look at the second slide, because I think that shows us uh, what the spacecraft is imaging. And for the, the, the viewers, what is it we're looking at? It seems as if... It's just like our moon with lots of craters. It's, it, uh, yes, and it's very round. Here you see it's very round. Very round. <laughs> and, and you also see this um, um, bright spot here in Okada Crater, and that's, that's salt, actually. It's, it's not water ice, it's salt in Okada. Remarkable. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And so h how would you I interpret now that you know that it's nearly spherical, that implies that it's predominantly made of ice? Is that well, uh, in, in, in some way, I mean, it, it implies that it was uh, once soft inside. It has to, it has to, what scientists call it, geophysicists call it differentiated. Yeah, yeah. Now, I know you brought a little short video which NASA has prepared, which will give us a much better understanding of what this world made of ice actually looks like. So, uh, if we could run the video, let's. And if Norbert, you can just talk us over as we start seeing some of the, uh, the more interesting landforms. So this is prepared by NASA, and all of these data are from the Dawn spacecraft. So away you go. Yeah, well, here you see uh, right away one of the um, bright uh, spots again, and, and, and lots of craters. It wasn't, it, uh, you know, wasn't necessarily expected. And it has the large craters that we're seeing here, that they, they would be how big? About Oahu size, or bigger, or smaller than? Uh, yeah, about Oahu size. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it is a heavily uh, crater surface, and how this is made, made, by the way, is from from stair imaging. So there's a camera which looks at a surface uh, at different angles, and then we can make um, stereo. You know, we can reconstruct how tall and steep all the mountains are. So this is the the Okada crater again, with this uh, 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 bright spots. The small the part of animations, it. aren't they? Uh, with real data, but obviously. Uh, Oh yeah, that's, that's real, real photos and real uh, topography, and they a slightly bit of color enhancement uh, uh, for, for a reason that become clear. So at, at Okada, uh, there's a little bit of water ice, but it's mostly salt uh, on the surface. This is a, another crater. Is the topography in this view enhanced, or is this what one would see if you were in a spacecraft? In orbit over Ceres. I think it's not enhanced. So, that's so th th one those one. cliffs are actually quite high. In. Oh, and this is a, is a famous mountain, Ahuna Mons, one of the tall mountains, is four, four and a half kilometer high or so. And so here it is far that there must be a, what we call a, a cryovolcanism, so a volcanism, but not with lava, not with molten rock, but with molten ice. Yeah, we've had Bridget Conter Smith on uh, this show in a few weeks ago, uh, and, and she was talking about cryovolcanism as well. So this is just another manifestation of water erupting on the surface. Yeah, and, and it, but there's only one such thing on Ceres, at least currently. There have been, might have been more of them in the okay. past. Um, um, there's another big crater. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and these large craters, presumably that implies that the surface is quite old? Uh, yes, and this by the way is Haulani. So there are two craters named after Hawaiian names now. Ah. Haulani and Lono. 
so uh, there's a feature named uh, um, another feature in a solar system, or two more features in a solar system with, with Hawaii names. So yeah, the, the surface of Sirius is is old, but, but but also what it means is that this crater, but it, that the surface wasn't so soft that its craters haven't relaxed back to to flatness. So it sort of indicates a, a fairly rigid surface also. In the, right. Yeah. Um, and they look quite like craters on the moon with just a few subtle variations, right? So maybe the central mountains are a bit smaller or something like that? Yeah, there, there is some, yes, but there's some complexity for central mounds. Um, which, um, but, you know, on a, on a chorus right. picture, it looked like. Um, all right. Hey, well, we're getting near the, uh, the, the mid show break, Norbert, but I mean, clearly, you're on the Dawn Science team for special skills that you have. So when we come back, I'd be really interested to hear what exactly you're doing and why you find Sirius particularly interesting. So um, let me just uh, remind the viewers that you're watching Think Tech Hawaii Research in Manoa. I'm your host, Pete McGuinness-Mark, and our guest today is Norbert Schoghofer, who is work working with the Planetary Science Institute, and we're learning a lot about the dwarf planet series. So we'll be back in about a minute's time. So see you then. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Planning all week for the day of the big game. Watching at home just doesn't feel the same. What on the list is who's gonna drive? It's nice to know you're gonna get home alive. Plan for fun and responsibility. Choose the DD. Captain of our team is the DD. For every game day, assign a designated driver. And welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii Research in Manoa. I'm your host, Pete McGuinness-Mark, and our guest today is Norbert Schoghofer, who is a scientist at the Planetary Science Institute here in Hawaii, and we're learning all about the Dwarf Planet series. Now, Norbert, we got a great overview of what the Dawn spacecraft saw or has been seeing at Ceres, but tell me more about your specialization. What is it that you do, and why are you part of the science team? Yeah, I, I study uh, ice, regular water ice, so to speak. And, and Ceres has a, a, a lot of, of water ice, and we, we found a lot of water ice uh, at Ceres, although the asteroid belt is, you know, I mean, the surface is vast, so are usually dry. Mm -hmm. uh, Ceres has a lot of ice. Um, and so if you, go, if you go to the next uh, uh, slide here, we, we see one of those results. And, and part of the reason I want to show this is, is not only because uh, I am involved in this work, but also because it is a history in Hawaii. And was a quarter century ago, there was two scientists in Hawaii, um, um, Fraser Finale and Roger. And Jim James, Salvel. James, uh, James Salvel. And I, I hope they're watching us. I, uh, I, I, rumor has it we're still in Hawaii. I know at least Fraser's is still in Hawaii. <laughs> and and they predicted that that you know not uh, there's no ice on the surface uh, of of Sirius, but there's ice very close to the surface. And, and explain yeah. to the viewers, we're seeing what. Yeah, so this is so there's a there's an interesting technique called neutron spectroscopy. So this is this is nuclear physics, but it really does allow, allows us to peek beneath the surface and identify. Uh, um, hydrogen, which is a, a big part of water. We're seeing the globe series here with the equator running through the middle. And the yeah, so the, the, the polar region, the blue, has lots of near surface water ice, and in the, in the red region here on near the equator, there is, uh, there is no water ice near the surface. Um, 
And what would be the ambient temperature at this distance from the sun? Oh, Th this is quite cold. 150 Kelvin. 150 so, uh, Kelvin, so I, uh, minus 120 centigrade, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's so, pretty cold. Um, but you're seeing these latitudinal variations. Yeah. Nice. So it, exactly one expects from from ice which retreats according to temperature, where it's warm. 150 Kelvin is cold, but still warmer than the poles. And and so at the poles, you know, although it's you know this object is in vacuum, it has lost very little ice and it's mm -hmm. close to the surface. So so their predictions were essentially right, um, and and that's what this map Good essentially for Fraser, shows. Huh? Good for yes. But bottom line, though. I often ask our guests, why should we care if there's ice out at the distance of Ceres from the sun? Why, why, why is this an important discovery? Well, it, it's the most direct evidence for, for lots of water ice in the Astro Belt. So there's water ice in the Astro Belt, and, and water ice has you know, a, a broader context in, in, in more ways. I mean, on Earth, uh, water is necessary for all life. Right, so we are, we are much interested in the origin uh, of Earth's water. We are also interested in the habitability of objects in a solar system, which uh, requires water in one or the other. But way. unlike, yeah. say, Europa or Enceladus, which are two of the moons in the outer solar system, there's no liquid water ocean beneath. Yes, so crust. Sirius is is uh, frozen now, but at some point it was it was warmer. Okay, and. Recognizing that there is water ice further out from the sun, uh, does that have any implications for you know, like the water we have here on Earth, or is it completely different? Yeah, possibly. I think we have now have to view the Astro Belt as a as a reservoir of water ice. Okay, which would mean what? Which could have delivered uh, water ice to the early Earth. Early ah, Earth okay. System. Okay. Yeah. So Earth's oceans could have come. Could they have come? From, from the asteroid, the asteroid. Yes. yes, absolutely. Fascinating, yeah. fascinating. Well, let's see a little bit more of what, what you do, because uh, in addition to working with the neutron spectrometer data, you do well that you... Well, there, there's more yeah. eyes. There is even more eyes on Sirius uh -huh. <laughs> in interesting uh, uh, places. So, so, there, there, so, you know, there's lots of craters, but, and the right. craters near the poles will never see the sunlight. Well, always in shadow. Uh, really? Yes. So that e even colder. <clears throat> and so, um, and, and so, this uh, this little colored dots here are all the craters which um, which you never see the sunlight. So as as Ceres rotates, we're, we're permanent. So in this yeah. image, we're seeing uh, the globe of Ceres. The lines obviously are, are drawn on with computer, um, and where they converge at the the top. Is that the North Pole? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. A and so, uh, tell us some more. The little white blue dots. What what are they? Yeah. So they never see the sunlight. Uh, never. Never. <laughs> All right. Well, we haven't. We haven't. How, how, how do you know that? Oh, um, uh, in in different ways. One one is we it's just lots and lots of images, and we stack them all. Uh -huh. And and. Uh, and if it, you know, if no matter what the position of Sirius along its orbit, and, and we did this close to summer solstice, so you know, sun never gets higher than summer solstice at noon. So, so um, yeah, and we did this for many, many times. And and so whatever is left dark there is is perennial dark. It's dark all year. All right. So presumably, the Dawn spacecraft has been orbit around Sirius for long enough to see changing seasons. Well, we uh, well we have seen a change in season, but uh, uh, but not uh, all of them, only part of them. But it, it also was there, it arrived there actually around summer solstice uh -huh. in the northern hemisphere. Uh, summer solstice in the northern hemisphere. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Now, I've heard that there's potentially ice, say, in the polar regions on the Moon and on Mercury, and each of those worlds isn't the orbital inclination or the axis of the uh, the spin axis of the world. Right, so does that imply that Ceres also has a sort of a, a, a perpendicular inclination? Yes, to? yes. So, so Earth's moon also has this permanent shadow yeah. crater. So does uh, planet Mercury, and, and that's because we're not tilted very much. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, why isn't Ceres tilted? Well, that's you know might just be um, a coincidence, or it might be a um, Result of its evolution, but I mean, there's asteroids with all kinds of um, of orientations. 
So and 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 Sirius actually wasn't always that small as it now is now. So so it, it varies a bit. Um, and so so another reason why Sirius is so important because it teaches us something about this permanent shadow region. Because everybody wants to mine eyes on the moon, right? Sure. Wants to study eyes on the moon, and yet we don't understand why the moon, Earth's moon, you know, has eyes in some places and not in others. And so Sirius is a is a wonderful example where we can study the same phenomenon. And you can yeah. study it in more yeah. detail. I think the next slide will show us a little bit more about some of these. All right, so again, talk us through what is it we're, we're looking at here, four individual images of craters. Yeah, so this, this is four snapshots of, a, of the same crater, and as the... As the ah, it's the same know, crater. Uh, I mean, every nine hour rotation period of series is nine hours. So every nine hours, you know, the sun... Uh, sort of, uh, well, from that point of view, the sun goes around the crater. Uh, around the crater right? So we, the floor of this crater is always shadowed. That's what this, um, you know, sort of uh, illustrates. No matter where the, what time of the day, no matter yeah. where the sun is, the floor never sees sunlight. And this would be a yeah. high summer in the northern hemisphere, yes. so the sun would never be able to illuminate yes, the, fl yeah. the floor of the crater. Um, and, and as we saw in the previous illustration, there are many examples like this. How, how would you study a crater in greater detail if you know that it never sees the sun? Uh, are, are there things that a scientist like yourself can, can do with that observation? Yeah, so it's dark, right? So yeah. how, how do we see what's in this dark crater? <laughs> Good question. It, it's difficult, but luckily the cameras are sensitive enough. So just from a little bit of scattered light, from a little bit of indirect light, one can get a hint of what's inside this. Um, why why would there be scattered light? There's no atmosphere on Sirius. Well, it's scattered, I mean, it's scattered from the surface. Oh, or reflected, maybe. It, it reflected, reflected, it bounced reflected off like crater walls um, and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So can, can you see it in any, any detail? Or? Well, enough of a detail. Enough of detail. Enough of detail. Uh, next slide. Will the show next slide, what's, okay. What, what's, what's in there, actually? So it basically stretches images. And oh right. if you go to one, so on, a, on, on the left on the slide, there's this crater, and a, and, you know, in a regular image where it's dark, but on the right, it's just the image stretched. All um, right, so, so in the right-hand image, we're actually looking into the shadow, is that correct? Yes, ah, absolutely. Okay. Everything else is now over, over illuminated. Uh, it's, it's, uh, and the bright right patches, there. presumably in the middle, is the middle of the crater floor. Yes, so we think this is water ice. Water on, ice. on the surface now, not beneath the surface, but right on the surface, water ice in, in some of these permanent Remarkable. shadow craters. And, and this crater is a few kilometers across? Or? Yeah, maybe 10 kilometers um, uh, okay. or so. Okay, right. so it's a re reasonable size one. Um, and I think you've yeah. got an, uh, another set of examples in the, the next slide. Yeah, so the, there's another twist to this uh, story that in one of these uh, craters, and that's again on the left, there's an image of a, a crater. Uh, in the middle now, there's a stretched image where you see some bright deposits. But if you stretch it right on, a, on the rightmost version, some of this bright stuff actually sticks out into the sunlight, okay. luckily. And, and then um, with a spectrometer, which is a, on board of dawn, one can identify what it consists of. You can't do that when it's shadowed, but one can see then just a little bit of light. And it's water ice. And, and the spectrum is of water, water ice. So, so you know, we, we really think this is water ice in this permanent shadowed region. Right. Now as a researcher, just seeing, oh, there's water ice here, that's interesting to the layperson, perhaps. But what kind of research are you still doing to further understand? Are you looking at, say, how much water is in one of these bright patches, or, or, or what? You, you do numerical modeling, or do you...? Yes, so, so, so one of the big outstanding questions right now is that once in a while, Sirius seems to develop uh, an atmosphere, a very thin atmosphere. We call it an exosphere. But it seems to be coming and going. And, uh, and it's made of, of, of water, uh, water molecules. And, and to find out the origin of this episodic atmosphere, you know, what, where it comes from. And, and so that's one of the... And, one and, of the and this periodic <laughs> atmosphere, is that an annual basis, every decade, every million years? We, we do not know yet. It's been observed with telescopes, you know, uh, mm -hmm. telescopes on Earth or in Earth orbit um, a few times. And other times it's not been observed. So it hasn't happened while the Dawn spacecraft was there. And, but we, we might get lucky, and the Dawn spacecraft still being there, maybe we, we see form again. So we, at this point, we, we don't have enough data to say how often it's there. 
uh, and why it's there. But it's been observed in yes. the last 30 or 40 oh, years, yes. Yes. so it's an ongoing process. It's not something which is you know, a billion years ago or something like that. Yes. So how did you get into this line of work? It's, it's kind of a specialized field, isn't it? There can't be many people working on ice on uh, dwarf planets. Yeah, well, all our research is specialized, right? Yeah. Otherwise, uh, um, otherwise uh, you know, we... Well, you know, it's, it's just a very, it's a complex and big world, right? <laughs> um, and so, um, I mean, I came to Hawaii to study ice, right? Which, uh, yeah, that doesn't is, make uh, sense uh, to me, but still, oh, it, it, <laughs> <laughs> you are, yes. So, um, I, I study ice at many places where one might not expect it to be, um, including places in Hawaii, yeah. <laughs> uh, including places on the moon, Mars, and, and now Ceres. So, um, there, there is some... Uh, systematic, you know, um, for you to do what I do. Well, well, I know a little bit about you, and you're not really a glaciologist, someone who would study ice in the same way we would investigate on Earth. So, are you a physicist? Do I'm, I'm, you do yeah. I'm a physicist. You, you, you're a physicist. So I'm a physicist, and I, I, I use physics to explain the real world, um, so to speak, and you know, under, you know, extreme conditions, and uh -huh. so I... And, and I think this is a, is a wonderful application of, of physics. Um, right. So, so any uh, young viewer who's watching who says, this is a really fascinating topic, how would she actually start progressing towards doing the kinds of studies you're, you're involved in? It sounds as if do science at high school, Math? Well, is there a lot of mathematics in there? Or well, uh, uh, if you're into physics, you have to be good at solving physics problems. Uh -huh. <laughs> so solve physics problems, and if you're really so good at solving physics problems, uh, every every school will want to have you. But it's remarkable. Every university will want to have you. Remarkable <laughs> coming to Hawaii to study ice. I know you you work in various venues uh, on the Big Island, which is a very interesting place to find. Uh, uh, frozen ground and that sort of thing. Uh, just briefly though, the Dawn spacecraft is still collecting data? Yes, it's still collecting data, but it's further out now than it was in its uh, closest orbit. Um, and, and so in that sense, the main uh, mission of Dawn is, uh, Dawn at Ceres is, uh, the most interesting part of the mission is, is over. I mean, the low, the low orbit part has ended. Um, but, um, um, we are still collecting data, and, um, and as I mentioned, we are going to now put in an elliptical orbit and get very closer to the surface than we have been before. So we get uh, even better images and better neutron data. Um, and and how long do you think the, the spacecraft will, will stay alive? We know Cassini oh. just dived into Saturn, for example. Is it? Spacecraft missions end for uh, two reasons, either technical reasons. In our case, we will run out of hydrogen, which is a... Uh, so, so it's iron propulsion, but it also has hydrogen uh, for, for parts of its tasks. And after that, it can't be you know, stabilized anymore. Uh, uh -huh. Or we run out of budget. Right? <laughs> <laughs> So, so let's hope it will end for technical well, reasons, not for budget reasons. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, this particular show is running out of time, Norbert. So um, I'm going to thank you for being a fascinating guest today. And let me just remind the viewers, we are watching Think Tech Hawaii, Research in Manoa. I've been your host, Pete McGuinness-Mark, and our guest today has been Norbert Shogoffer, who is a researcher with the Planetary Science Institute here in Hawaii. So thanks for watching, and join us again next week for another research in Manoa. Goodbye for now.